Hi everyone, and this is me, Luna Mofire. Thank you so much for joining us to this wonderful new day and the very first episode of Butterfly Writers Presents Flow Point. We're going to be interviewing a lot of really beautiful, gorgeous, wonderful, talented artists who are in India and uh, get to know their journey in terms of flow. We're going to be talking about how we live and what we think about flow arts, what advantages do we have when we pursue flow arts and uh, a lot more. Uh, some challenges that flow artists come across and uh, how to face those challenges. Subscribe, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, uh, share the links with your friends who would love to know these topics that we're discussing about and um, without any further ado, let's go to our first episode. This episode is with Supriya Srivastava. She's from Bangalore. She's a wonderful hula hooper. Yeah, let's find out more about her journey on this episode. Please subscribe on Luna Mofire. Thank you, family. As I know that you were running a marketing freelance agency and you quit it in December to pursue low arts full time what were you thinking Tell us. <laughs> i was running my marketing agency purple filter for last seven years and i thought of uh, shutting it because um, you know i I'm, I'm a very conscious liver you know so what i do is like i like to navigate and change my path if i see that something's not working for me and especially if i'm not enjoying something what do i more importantly enjoy doing you know that's more important for me so yeah I, it was just a very conscious call to move into this direction right so you uh, chose to take up the flow arts career aspect of your life more seriously can you tell us how flow arts affected you and uh, like you say you learned a lot from your behavior yeah. through flow arts in your mm -hmm. life and that kind of helped you um you know, see things in a different light. So can you tell us a bit more about how you feel about flow arts? Yeah. So flow arts in, in one line, if I have to say, it changed my life, right? Completely. So I have to give all the credit to even me living today, uh, to hooping, to flow arts for that matter. So I'll explain this a little bit, you know. So I started it like nine years ago is when I started my journey, which happened to start and go actually. Um, I was living in a, a hostel that time and that was the first time I saw a hoop. I still remember it was a green and a silver hoop, you know, kept on the table. And it's a funny story because, you know, there was this girl and uh, uh, looking down upon Indians and we had this conversation in the hostel going on again and again. And I was just like so irritated with her behavior that in the evening that she said that, you know, Indian girls are so boring. And I was like, so what do you want them to do? Hula hoop, you know, let me do it. You know, I just picked it up like in just, I don't know why I was doing it. So I ended up just picking it up. And to my surprise, I could just do it. That's when I realized that, uh, wow, I didn't know that I could do something like that before. You know, so the first reaction for me, which I think most of the students also give today, is that, you know what, oh, I didn't know I could do it. You know, so that's how it started for me, you know, and it came into my life and I was actually doing solo travels, going to many places because I was facing a lot of rejections in personal life and my, uh, you know, my professional life was the only thing which was going fine but uh, everything else was haphazard you know in my life that time so this became like an anchor something that I just got so curious about when I came back to Bangalore then I ordered one from Amazon and then I realized that uh, uh, I'm not able to do it you know why, why was I able to do it back in Goa and why am I not able to do it when I'm back in Bangalore you know it was so crazy so I kind of became like a cynic I have a lot of cynical psycho tendencies in me <laughs> so I think I became very cynical about the fact that why could I do it there and why am I not able to do it here so I started researching and then I found Deanna Love's video where she explains about the size of the hoop and how it matters and all of that and that's how my journey got into it so I think I became like a hoop nerd at that point of time I still have like those websites which no which i think not many people go and look into it and some websites are even closed you know so you know those older times were just like my nerdy times where i found this new discipline and then i found that oh hooping has so many tutorials and there, there's techniques people can learn from it and there's no limit to learning you know 
so when i found like this abundance of a space where there is no limit to learning i just think i became very um, attracted towards it uh, what started happening beautifully was that i would spend a lot of time alone at home so i would just pick up the hoop and started doing it as on a, as a thing on the side to keep me going but i realized that i was doing 3 4 hours of continuous hooping and less of that work and you know it started like changing and changing my behaviors also you know so flow arts happened at the time that i am when i'm frustrated you know some client deal is not happen i would pick up the hoop and put on some song which would help me just just beat this shit energy out of my system you know so that started happening any problem may be i would just be like yeah at the end of the day i'm just going to go to my hoops and bust it out so just deal with this whatever you're dealing throughout the day and i think that has been my source of keep going on and figuring it out uh, and my business i think i could survive it also for so long because i was not ready to give up i said that i have to give my 100% and my like if till i feel like yes i'm not shutting it because of some lack i wanted to always shut it when i feel like yeah the job's done Uh, so yeah, it just happened very beautifully. You know, in my fifth year of entrepreneurship, I got I hired. Uh, I, I mean, didn't hire. I actually got a partner. You know, so business business partner also involved. And that lesson came from Flow Arts. You know why? Because one day I was just sitting and I'm just like, you know what? It's so tough. I shouldn't be doing it all by myself. I need some support. And why am I so scared of asking for support? You know, so many things I'm asking for. and there i see my hoop staring at me from a distance you know i felt that it was speaking to me you know in that moment because i'm sitting with those thoughts and it felt like you know what all you need is a partner you know just like me you know so the hoop kind of spoke to me in that sense and then i realized yeah maybe i should get a partner so you know it i feel like it that kind of gives me some reasons to do and i think that was the best decision of my life then because my business part partner added a lot of value you know and the way i wanted to uh see my company in the shape i wanted because i i don't believe in lack mentality i don't want to close anything because of a lack i want to close it because it's my decision you know so i like that space and i and when she came in she brought in so many processes so many things it was the best times and then i could do it with this piece in my mind so i think you know um, people will talk about how it's changed them differently but i think this is how it helped me when i was 28 at that point of time i think 27 28 yeah so uh, your hula hoop was your inner voice keep moving forward supriya and you know this is the way you can help yourself and just go for it and just do it you yeah. also uh, teach hula hooping to kids and to adults and when did that start two years into my hooping space uh, i started looking for a partner because you know space like can somebody teach me can i learn from somebody here so i started uh, researching uh, you must know gunjan sara right so he has been my mentor so he was the first person he's juggler and amazing he's so good at so many props and such an amazing kind human being you know he actually gave me the space which i needed that time you know not just for practice but even in his heart and in his life you know like he really um took care of me and my art side of things he was the first one to tell me that okay it's great to start focusing on every other prop but you know give your devotion to one to see you know how it is and i know i think its voice is still there so i touch many props and i'm like yeah yeah but hooping is mine like hoop is mine you know <laughs> i still have that uh, thing somewhere engraved so this he encouraged me to actually start teaching in a school so he took me to a school uh, called oromira international school and uh, i didn't believe in myself but then he said you would you would see a different side come with me so i went with him and then there were like uh, uh, many students there so now we would divide the groups he would teach a group and i would be teaching my group so my group teacher like kids started to like me and i started to like them i started to see that you know if i'm showing them one trick they're showing me seven different things to do from that space you know so i realized that oh my god like i'm getting to learn so much from kids by just being in their presence because they are not intimidated by you they are not overwhelmed by you they they just speak so openly and freely so i think i fell in love with kids and also teaching and learning around the same time so that's how i entered into teaching and uh, and when kids actually started showing me that you know so so, uh, so there was this 
shy kid, which I would want to talk about. I started teaching in a place called Green Pocket in Indranagar. And at the same time, I was teaching in this uh, place called the Art Tree, very beautiful art space, right? Two different locations. But I was also working on my business. And at the same time, I decided we can speak it. So let me just do that and teach some kids. So I started with that. And there I saw there was this girl. Uh, Shireen, right? So she used to come and she was a very shy girl. She would never talk in the class, nothing. And I would feel like she's not even listening to me, you know. But when she would come back in the class, she would be the first one to do all the tricks, you know, everything. And I saw the difference, like within one year, I could see and her parent also uh, started telling me that, you know, she is so confident. Now she's going to birthday parties and showing them her tricks, going to different spaces. She's now not, and uh, she's not anymore the shy girl sitting in the class. You know, she it has opened up that for her. So that really made me see that, you know what, this can really change the game. And I personally have had very bad experiences with teachers myself. And I don't believe in the mainstream way of teaching uh, education system also. So I feel very strongly about that. And I want to bring in some changes there. So now I've come to that stage. Uh, but uh, when, it, when it started off, it was purely like just me going with the flow, Gunjan believing in me and me taking his support and taking his help and also not denying it. So me being open to it and he being, you know, the giver uh, definitely opened the gates for me. Now, there's much you have discovered about hula hooping through these nine years of uh, teaching, learning yourself, growing, meeting people in the community of flow arts. What do you think... Um, was uh, how was flow arts affecting let's say your financial life or your your spiritual life did get better like you say that you felt so much positivity and confidence yeah. and uh, physically also it gives you that energy uh, you can you can get rid of an energy which you don't really enjoy having inside you and flow to music dance and this is this sounds amazing but what about the financial aspect? Was was it smooth for you? What were the challenges that came along yeah. with this? Yeah, so that's a very good question, actually, Luna. And um, to answer this, I'll have to also explain a little bit about how I think. Because I think, uh, you know, uh, for me, I don't have a very comfortable relationship with money, right? And I understood that more when I started running my own business because everybody wants to run a business and they think it's a great place to do it and all of that. But actually, when you get into it, then you realize these operational works, the CA thing that, you know, GSTs, then so many taxes and other things that you have to, um, you know, keep your mind busy with. Um, you know, so I never wanted to deal with any of those things. And I, growing up, I had a lot of learning difficulties. So just to give you a background, right? So now, now in my life, I am now realizing and also having a lot of understanding of why I did what I did in the past, right? So when it comes to my finances, uh, I was running the business to also as a validation to myself that I can do it, you know? So it was an ego-driven uh, business, you know, for to say, to prove something to myself, to my family, you know, in, in that sense. And this, I'm realizing it now. So when uh, this space happened, uh, when I was trying to uh, run my business also, I was never looking at money as something that, you know, oh, if I'll have it, then I'll do it, you know? So the way I look at it, if I do it, I'll have it, you know? So I, I don't look at it as like, uh, it's something for me to go and grab. I think it's something that follows me, you know? So uh, that behavior, that mindset uh, completely changed for me, especially when I was living in my studio house. And I was looking at money plant one day, you know, and I had like this deep thought and I'm like, hey, look, this money plant, hai. this can grow on soil, this can grow on water, you know, it just multiplies, stays and alive, you know, and, and if you cut it from this money plant from one to another, it propagates and goes into other things. So I don't know, I just had like this boom realization again, that the, the, you have to first understand the nature of money. The nature of money is always like it wants to exchange, multiply, propagate, go forward, right? So it's not something you can have. So I don't believe in having it. I believe in working around it and then seeing where are the places where if I put in the money, if I put in the effort, I'm sorry, then how will it follow me? You know, so that's the uh, mindset I have with me. I have little savings that I obviously made uh, to sustain for the few uh, times and years, but I'm constantly putting efforts in the flow space, right? So I'm never going to be out of money. And that's the belief I have strongly because uh, it's not just coming out of like this false sense of bravado. Yeah, I can do it. No, 
I've done it for seven years. You know, like I've proven myself that even even beggars earn money. How are you gonna do it, mm-hmm. right? So, do you, do you think the flow arts gives you the confidence also to a certain extent? Yes. Like yes, that the flow arts is growing. Like what what would you like to also share with people who are just stepping in to flow arts who have all these thoughts of uh, am I doing better than the other person the comparisons the competition um, how do you take it like how did you uh, you know deal with all these uh, ideas and thoughts in the beginning of uh, am I good enough is this working out for me is this what I really wanted and so on um, so um you know, nine years ago when I started it, it just happened as something that was distracting me on the side, helping me get, you know, get back in my shape and perspire every day and all of that. Those reasons were there. So I didn't get into it with a goal, you know. So I think, uh, and we shouldn't. I feel like in the beginning, we should try many things and then see where our energy is enjoying it and, you know, uh, going with it and then follow that route you know so when i started it uh there were very few people who were doing grouping also around that time you know a few people who were teaching also for that matter oh, the yeah. flow art team right now is growing scene right now now i say it and I, i've been saying it from last five years the same statement that we might be the smallest community but we are the fastest growing community in india right now you know so and i can say that with so much confidence because i when i lived in goa last year i saw how many indians were right there at the in front of love temple and you know, just doing, uh, you included, right? And uh, Vajra and so many, you know, people in Goa and Indian artists who are doing it. And the ratio of the Russians versus Indian artists there is now becoming so much better, you know? So when you see this, when you see that there are so many Indian artists who are also opting for it, the thing is, uh, that's beautiful. But every artist will choose every different path for themselves. Like some artists will go for performances. Like for me, I call myself an artist because I express through emotions and my art or whatever. But at the same time, I'm an educator. I see myself more as an educator than being as an artist, you know. So while everybody see me as an artist, I don't see myself like that, you know. Uh, I, I, I don't think it's in me to be in that space because I always want to keep it at some distance also, my, you know, because it's so personal. So every artist is different and then uh, this is this understanding gives you uh, the space to understand that there is no competition, you know, because I strongly believe that, you know, there's no one like me and there's no one like you, you know, so you and you have something to give it to the world that maybe somebody else will not have. But just to add to the previous point, right, where we speak about the competition and we speak about all of that. Now, the point is, see, when I started off, there was Rajni Ramachandran, who was absolute like somebody that I was looking up to. I had gone to see her shows also. And I can see where, how her artist life, journey, mindset, things she believes in, things that turned her down, things that gave her strength and all of that, how it has changed her. She has been in so many countries, so many spaces. See, she has created so many things. She was a part of Kingdom of Dreams. She was a great artist in the hooping space. Is, is, why am I saying was? She's just not on Instagram, but she's doing great work on YouTube, by the way. So you should check it out. But uh, yeah, she is now so, uh, she's she's a feeler, you know, she's so sensitive and all of that. So now these were the people that I was looking up to and I wanted to learn from, you know, and we were just exchanging notes. And then Eshna came into the picture. So it was just like Eshna, me, Rajni and few more people, you know, around that time. There were not much going on, you know. And that also wanted me to keep learning. So when I would see them doing it, in the beginning, I'm like, oh my God, oh, she's doing it so well, you know. And then I would sit with myself and then be like, so what? She's doing great. It's good for her, you know. But why are you comparing it with yourself? You know, so I had to do that mental check-in with myself. And it's not like you can avoid that thought. Thoughts are ca- flying every time. You just need to catch them and say, hello, okay, now I'm giving you attention. This one, yeah, what do you want from me? You know, so I look at thoughts like that. And when this thought came to me that, you know, like, oh, sh- I-, I have not even learned this and everybody's doing foot hooping, you know, for that matter. That's how it was. Like, you want to learn so many things and you see other people doing it. And I'm like, yeah. So then I started seeing as more as a healthy competition. You know, I started seeing it as a space for inspiration. You know, and my social media mind, because I look at algorithms at different channels in different ways. I'm like, Instagram was built for to inspire. I tried various formats, you know, various formats. So I start thinking like, 
okay, this thing has helped me and it can help many other people. Where can I take it? So I took to uh, weekend sessions. I took it to, uh, you know, places where I could teach, start doing workshops, uh, corporate workshops, start sending artists to performances. I also performed in few in the beginning and then work got me over. So many things were going on like that. And then I started like creating some very different properties which were not created before with the help of people I knew. So there's an artist called Vijayta Singh who's a brilliant uh, Zumba instructor, right? So I created a property called Zumba uh, Zula uh, Zula Night. So it was it's supposed to be like a party night property where Zumba and hula hoop is on the floor and you do different things and all of that. So I experimented with that. I checked the pulse of people, how people took it, you know. And then I'm and, and I'm always gauging the pulse. Then there are kind time when I became in like. Uh, addictive yoga because I was doing a lot of like yoga uh, just as a warm up before I would do some tricks or whatever and I started feeling my body so much more like I would just be like oh this stretch feels so good I can see which muscles are getting in, uh, active what is happening in my body where am I feeling the knots you know your body starts speaking to you as you start giving attention to it right so it started just happening so naturally for me that uh, um, I wanted to do yoga and I went to Rishikesh, tried to do yoga, couldn't do that, come back. Then I found Gauri Murthy, who does brilliant yoga, you know. So I said, we have to do a hoop yoga workshop or something. So we combined two forms again, hoop and yoga, and did a hoop yoga workshop. So I experimented with that, you know, to see how things go and how people take it. You know, we had some good 20, 30 people who had come that day and it was a great night and, you know, great evening and all of that. Then I was like, okay, what else do we need? And I'm always observing the pulse of the community and I'm like, wow, this is growing great. Let's see what we can do next. And um, then Hoop Jam Party happened last year. When I came back from Goa and moved back to Bangalore, it was just upon, upon, upon chance, Hard Rock Cafe reached out to me and they said, do you want to do something? And I'm like, hmm, I have a space. I have something that I can do with the community. What do I do? You know, so instead of just offering them a performance, I said, what if I bring the whole community to one pop, right? So it just happened upon chance. And that was brilliant because how many people attended this Hoop Jam party? I think easily it was 100 people and above. And that too on a week weekday, it was on a Wednesday. And uh, they came after their work and they booked tickets in advance. And that's what I'm saying. Like the Bangalore community right now is the fastest and the largest community in terms of flow art scenes being active. And there are many players here who are putting in so much effort. But there are, again, many problems in the artist space, which I'm recognizing, which I'm also learning. So right now I'm also going very slow. I just listen to everybody. I understand what's happening, you know, because I'm not trying to see what can I break. I'm trying to see what can be repaired, what can be done better. So just to give you an instance, like we're looking for performances, uh, some artists that I'm handling here, I'm looking for their performances here in different venues and pubs and all of that, right? And now when I go there, uh, they say, okay, three performances, three costume changes, all of that we'll do, we'll close it at this, let's do it. I said, sure, Mama, there is the green room you know so they're like uh no there's a toilet they can use the toilet and all that so i say sure but uh see my artists are going to come and do three costume changes there are girls there are boys you know at least provide them a decent space where they can change my fight is with a little bit with the system you know that i'm trying to kind of figure out and make a dignified space for artists you know when it's not something that we can solve in one day and obviously it cannot but we can at least actively consciously start thinking in that direction every time we get a gig we don't just think about ourselves, we think about the community. You know, a little bit about like, is my action going to affect somebody else uh, who could do, be a part of it? Because that's how you look out for the community, you know? That's how you provide for the community. Otherwise, there's no point of calling us a community also, you know, is the way I look at it. But I do know that not many people look at it this way because this understanding also uh, comes from a lot of space from where you are in your life. Like if you're dealing with your own insecurities at heart, you know, you're not going to be thinking about community at that moment, you know, or if you're dealing with your own financial issues for that matter, you're not going to be doing so to each their own. And the community also needs to have that understanding, that lack of judgment, you know, and more understanding space that you could create, you know. So, yeah, I mean, I'm looking at it from all of those angles. You are an artist, you're an educator, you create events, you have your business of workshops and um do you sell props? I was. So I tried that also to understand that I don't enjoy it. So I stopped it, you know. But uh, yes, that's definitely a possibility and a big possibility. So I'll tell you, there are many 
avenues where you can actually go and work in this space you know the only thing is it's hard work and second not many people have done it so you don't have many guardians to tell you you know to tell you hey do it this way so people are experimenting figuring it out on their own which a creative person would enjoy a creative person would enjoy this space appreciate that you take up the responsibility for laying out some guidelines for people who are just new so as you yeah. said that you would you know stand for the artist or look out for the community so that's yeah. that that i think it's a very new concept now which is coming up and uh, yeah respect man i feel like you know right now uh we are in a space that there's a lot of buzz there is a lot of inquiry a lot of requests we are not in covid world anymore so the performance scale and the kind of uh, uh, you know avenues that there are here are many okay it's just that uh, we need to become a little bit more smart a little bit more vigilant and a little bit more like pushing our comfort zone to not just keep saying yeah, i'm just an artist leave it you know you know you have to understand that if you're an artist you are not just managing your art you have to manage yourself also for example hilia hilia the no, i don't know if you know hilia is the extra no, extraordinary uh, is her instagram id the circus but uh, she's a performance artist right street artist now she she shares so much educational uh, information about performance art you know about costume about styling about behaviors of people things that she relates with and all of that now that's such great content you know uh, in terms of education coming into the main sphere so now wherever you are as an artist explore what you like doing and go and chase that right like i think that's very important and that will change the game there's an uh, app called diy.org it's a kids centric uh, app where kids just subscribe and uh, they can learn from tons of videos so i was signed up to do a course for them uh, create a whole module and a curriculum for them to learn um, hula hooping and i just did it and i i and that's still playing and i still keep getting views on this still getting comments on it for example something that you did so many years ago could still be helpful to somebody today yeah. you know so this we have to understand the power of it i started putting up account in there and then slowly slowly i can see that people are getting value out of it there's still people learning out of it right so i say that you should just be sincere to what you know and what you like doing and then just put in your effort there then rest everything follows most of the people live in fear they lo ye nahi hua to kya hoga wo nahi hua to kaise hoga nahi maine ye kiya to wo kaisa hoga you know i also have very deep personal fear like that which i'm not going to expose but the point is like we have to expose it to ourselves you know what scares us is the path for us also most of the times right people could just keep reaching out to me for everything and then i realized how much it is draining me you know so i had to excuse myself because nobody else is going to come and do it and you can't fight with the community that you been trying to build to say ki hey don't come to me you know hello so i excused myself till i get my strength my recovery my mind into place of what i want to do i use hooping more to it came to me more as an uh, emotion that i have to express through it i think one should before they get into fire before they even pick up the prop like i would say that they should really first stay with like their basic props learn the techniques the methods the methodology the planes you know the correct posture the correct holds the techniques to follow the eye with the gaze and so many things are there you know so they need to first uh, make the foundation strong you know and that is what i'm working on to make my own foundation strong to make the community foundation strong to make you know your own art foundation a little stronger you know so many people are doing like windmills but their planes are off for example and uh, my point is like they don't even realize since they're doing it it's happening so what's the problem i said yes hooping does give you that space that you can be doing so many things and everybody brings their own unique flow but then if when you want to maneuver from one plane to another you will find it difficult you know or you know is that's just a very basic small example of it but then if you are following the basis so much you can translate from one prop to another if you just know about it for example right so i feel like we should we, we really in the excitement of learning hooping doing different things doing so many tricks we ignore the foundation you have to become foundationally strong there has to be people who have spent 10 years into this by learning as an artist it's their actually i believe i feel it's their onus to create a structure or to create or give something which is not here and this is the fabulous time to do it you know because right now we are in the growing space 
you know there are so many artists who are coming from outside and doing it and then we complain i've seen like in the the talk in the community about like oh the russians are taking our space these people are taking our space that people are taking space my point is like nobody is taking your space you're just sitting and crying and complaining if you go out and make your own space you will get your space so you know the point is uh, there could be incidents there could be people preferring a white skin over you you do not honestly when i look at you and i'm like you're performing with these foreigners right you made a place for yourself you know if you would have sat thinking oh they got it i didn't let's be there then you are a spectator and you're not a performer with them mm-hmm. you know so you have to put yourself out there you have to see what the market is enjoying you saw that the market like this goes look you invested into hair wigs with butterfly riders you created your own costumes you yes. created your own headgear over all these years of like uh, listening to flow people saying that yeah. oh, you know we are guys so we don't get more jobs and we are indian so we don't get more jobs and all of these things yeah. also realize that when i was still doing that no matter what and you know not thinking of these things as limiting me and when i would introduce myself and my teammates who are also indians by the way mm-hmm. and uh, i would introduce them to managers they would come up to me like indian people flow art like indian people can do yeah. and like how exotic is that now yes white girls doing something europeans russians uh, the kind of flow people doing something was exotic at some point but now yeah. in goa it's more exotic to be exotic. an indian and yes you know take that space on the stage and yeah. people's mind and when they find out that you're an indian respect bro yeah. they come yes. up, like how did you do that like you know and and i that's exactly what i would like to also tell everybody that yeah hold your wow. ground don't fall into this negative uh thought cycle and mm-hmm. you know just work on yourself and at some point you will have had increased your value to a point that there is no other competition there's no other there's yes. job for everybody there is job for a guy for a girl for a whatever you know yeah But, there's you know sometimes i look at it like why do we complicate it there's air for everybody you know so there's a space for you also somewhere you know you just need to keep it simple and i love the fact that you said that now we are exotic because this is this is you being so involved in that space and you see it every day in day out right and you can st- this is the pulse information that you're giving us from that space right and people should know because we say we'll go to berlin we go to this place we'll be so exotic there what you said is absolutely right that right now we are the most exotic people because uh, there is relevance number one and there is approachability and people are thinking oh my god indian wow and so skilled oh my god talented oh my god and she can do it i can do it too you know she's really bold out there she can play with fire and not get burned i could think about i it. could do it too yes yeah and 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 obviously right now everybody's attracted towards it like a moth because it's cool you know and and it's great let people get attracted towards it because it's cool because those who really want to do it or if it if it, if it has touched their lives it will touch their life you know because it's flow <laughs> it will come into their life but our job right now is to get as many people to know that this exists this phase and this is something amazing and this is something that you can choose for the future uh, i think i was briefly mentioning it to you when i met you last in goa you know that uh, you know the community also expects a lot from you so the point is this is why i said that always think about what can you give to the community also because you need to go into the space of managing uh, taking off the load from the other person and not just thinking oh isne kiya to to yahi karega because hota kya na ki when people see like wow they did it they like you know you can do this also there are people coming like and giving me ideas so many times why don't we do this why don't we do that why don't we do this my point is why don't you do that you know and i'll give you all the support like i said all my knowledge all my support will come into this play and i'll be there to uh, support and handle because i'm not going anywhere you know so i would love to be in that space but i have a focus right now in my life so i am following that i'm working as the program director with this company called school right and we have different sports that we are uh, pushing in and uh, i'm trying to build a flow vertical within the school space so we have a school right now which has like 180 kids who are a part of alternative learning school parents and everybody has seen the change that the flow just hula hoops and dapo star alone has been able to bring into the institution for example right so i am focused towards that and i say that if anybody wants to be a part of it they can reach out to me 
and not just with like hey give me a space i say what are you going to give me in this space you know so i i want to know i want people to understand that you know it's not just taking you know it's about building together and then demanding they're right now not in the space to demand so we have to create everybody has to become a creator right now in some space and push if they really feel for it if you don't feel for it then you're not a part of the community you're not a part of the space <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's, that's a very crucial message that we need to share with the people to realize what are their responsibilities in the scene, yeah. you know, yeah. and and at the same time, be honest to our own responsibilities as a as a mentor or a teacher or a, a, an artist to ourselves. I feel like being an artist really uh, was the most positive part of my life because. Uh, physically and uh, mentally i i observe myself being in front of people with a big smile and want to cheer them up at the same time and i think that this wouldn't have been the case in my life if if i was not a performer if i wasn't on stage if i wasn't holding this massive smile on my face things would have been different with my kind of brain how do i deal with failures i actually don't deal with them <laughs> i'm actually very very hard on myself uh when it comes to failures i mean the only way redemption for me like to redeem myself from that failure is to learn something out of it you know that's how i deal with failures you know ki if did i learn something out of it or am i going to do it again because i can't des- deserve to have the same kind of failure again you know so that i am not very open to allowing my me personally and uh, this is when i just cut off from the world because they are trying to tell me no but it's okay and i'm like no it's not you know not for me and i will take my own time to come out of it i am not going to come out at your time or anybody else's time for that matter right i, I will take months years or maybe just two seconds you know but that will be my time so yeah that's how i deal with it <laughs> what what do you think was the biggest events that happened in your life when it comes to flow arts like some events which really changed your life uh, i think um, when i did my annapurna circuit trek you know with my hoops uh, that was my uh, favorite time because i had moved to rishikesh to do my hoop yoga and there i got bitten by a mosquito so within one week or second week i had to get myself back to delhi and stay there with my folks and all my dreams of bringing hoop yoga to the world were crushed because i couldn't do my yoga certification course okay so then i was sitting there and that's when i met my partner who was my partner then and uh, he uh, told me that he is completed his course now yoga course and he's planning to go to nepal so i said okay i'm coming along and then i just i was i was not at all in my best shape of uh, body because i was recovering from dengue and you know how it is a break bone fever and takes everything out of your body and i had like a injection of this issue and um, so i just decided that this is the only thing that is giving me happiness and i really want to see this person so i will just take the leap of faith and go you know so i just went and it was the most random thing and i ordered a hoop segmented hoop before that to go because i was just like my hoops are there with me and i'm going to take them to the uh, two places where i go so i always want to travel with my hoop and take it to different places so it just started so that was very special because i realized that i want to travel with my hoop you know and and my hoop was taking me i can't tell you it was hard trek for me because i'm not a trekker wasn't a trekker and it was a 10 day trek and i kept walking and at times when i was losing my will to take another inch and when i'm standing in between snow mountain hills and all that and i'm like i come so much far up I, if i go down with the same effort and if i don't go what is your choice and you know you are crying and crying and crying and then i'm like fuck it and then i <laughs> sorry for the word but i'm just like i just picked up my hoops joined them together while it's so cold and all that and then i found one venue and i told my partner shoot for it you know i got onto the hill and i'm just like hooping hooping doing it it's so cold you can you hoops are getting cold in like 5 minutes you know because it's like so cold but i just wanted to do it and i'm like my hoops got me here i wouldn't have been here you know if it wasn't for him if i wouldn't have wanted to give hoop yoga to the world gone gone wouldn't have gone to krishikesh wouldn't have been to nepal and then doing annapurna one of the toughest treks you know annapurna circuits and then coming back so i think that was the highest point for me when i took my hoop to tilichu lake and i took a picture like this and my whole face was burnt i was looking my worst everything was off but that moment i can never forget it was beautiful uh just to have that yeah so that was the first one 
second those things like i would say let's do this and then it will work or you know just those things are also very uh, integral for me those are um, moments for me hoop no jam party hoop jam party was definitely one of the biggest highlights uh, for me because i was not expecting i was like chalo 50 log bhi aa gaye to acha hoga you know like that but uh, i think ashna's collaboration helped and you know so many things that we were all working as a co- collaborator super villain said helped me a lot with planning so uh, that i think was one of the highlights because that day i saw the the need for the com- need for the community to have such a space for flow artists because you know it's like itne sare bacche ho gaye par khelne ki jagah nahi hai cheeze nahi hai karne ke liye unko karna kya abhi next aisa kuch matlab hai nahi infrastructure nahi hai but hamare paas bacche bahut hai theek hai so that is how i was feeling and i was like wow now when i saw the pulse there people were crying you know out of just tears and just having the space to be a part of a cipher so that was the most beautiful thing that i could have witnessed you know and i think the community also witnessed in bangalore that day yeah that's beautiful actually what i understand from this is that you used um, not only flow arts but like all these energies like uh, traveling and adventure and uh, companionship mm-hmm. and for your community uh, taking up a challenge and then you know overcoming it all yeah. of these things are that's that's wonderful actually and uh, for those who are listening and wondering like how will i be the best ever flow artist you know and you, you are already <laughs> yeah, you just have to live your life and take up the adventures and uh, you know be with the people who support you and keep doing yeah. your keep yeah. challenging yourself so basin feels the fun you know so that's the thing and i and it's a hard one huh? comparison comes so easily also like in our community because somebody is so good you're looking at how good they are and feeling bad for yourself it's just a feeling it will pass and it's just you your inability that's making you feel this way you yeah. know how do you train your mind your body what all i want to do first i have to figure that out right like what do i want to do and i have 24 hours in the day just like anybody else so how am i going to utilize that and for the efforts that i have to do it and uh, this is a very recent realization like i said january february and all of that i'm just still was figuring out stuff and now i have uh, put in like a structure i get up 8 am in the morning and i also set up like three sessions where people can book classes so things that you love like if you love giving classes it should be happening at least once in a day for you you know or if you're not giving classes then that time you should be doing your own class or you could be giving you know learning from someone you know so that's the way i look at it so i look at discipline as checklist not more like a linear way of following from 8 am to 12 pm you know so that things that have to be done in a day and you are good enough to figure out when you want to do it how you want to do it and all that that structure is dependent on you me in my head and i just i have just told myself one thing see if you have done your toothbrush if you made your bed you know and if you have learned one thing new you know be it anything or if you have picked up if, even if you have not learned anything new and if you have picked up your hoop on that day right and uh, even if it's for 10 minutes you know then it's good so i don't put unrealistic goals ki mujhe 1 ghanta to train karna hi hai 2 ghanta to karna hi hai because pehle main i have seen that there were times that i was training for 4 4 hours 5 5 hours like i'm not even stopping taking pauses stretching going back again like i'm just doing that a lot and then i realized that you know what it doesn't matter uh because i believe like i told you that uh, if you're doing something consistently for a long period of time you are going to get better at it you know that's my philosophy so even if you're doing 10 minutes 15 minutes half an hour it's good so i keep it to the day to the task of the day and then decide and see where can i fit my uh, practice time apart from that i also uh, one thing which i do regularly is take my notebook and uh, because i have a lot of like when i wake up i get a lot of thoughts about what to do in life and what i'm doing and all negative positive everything comes in so i just put it down on a paper like you know sometimes you may have like are yaar meri 4 baje meeting hai 3 baje yahan jana hai usko costume bhejne hai isko hoops bhejne hai you know so many things are going on sometimes and we don't know and we keep forgetting so i write them as like things i have to do and uh, i don't put a pressure on me or a deadline on me ki mere ko shaam tak khatam karna hai ya kab khatam karna hai matlab ye kaam hai you know and every now and then main khana khane gayi hu wapas aayi hu mere ko us list ko bas dekh lena hai usme se kuch karne ka mann kar raha hai to main kar lungi nahi karne ka mann kar raha hai to main chhod dungi and then i'll be like next day karna hai you know so i have understood myself to know that i don't like like while i like structures and spaces and work i don't like to have it in my life or in my room 
I don't care. It's my space and it's, it can be as dirty as it wants. And if you're coming home, then it'll be spick and span and awesome, you know, in like few seconds. So you know, I've trained my body to do all that. So that's, I think that is how I look at discipline every day that, you know, as long as you're doing things you love, as long as you're doing things, if you've done three things, then it's good. Then it's good. And on harder days, when I'm hitting with PMDD or something, then I don't take any decisions. I avoid decision making. I stall decisions for next day or ask somebody else to guide me to take a decision or whatever. Or not take that opportunity and just pass it on because I'm not in the space. So I just don't take it up and keep pushing my body into things. That YouTube is a is a, a powerhouse, right? A knowledge source for everybody. I would say that uh, go and check out. And in the hooping space, if I have to be specific. Then I would say go to Pam Hoops. You know she has so many tutorials on single hoops, double hoops, patterns, combinations, and uh, she's quite fun to watch also. So you know it, it, you can learn so much from her. Dian Love, one of the best tutors I would say out there, right? Um, artist tutors that I would say is there has the kindness, has empathy. You know her style is different, yeah. and I love it. On YouTube mm -hmm. or on Instagram. Yeah. YouTube, YouTube. Dian Love also on all. I'm telling YouTube only for now. And uh, then there are um, different disciplines. They're not into hooping, but uh, dress factor, for example, to go like into study. Like if you go to these uh, people who own these different uh, sites, and if you go into profile and go into a YouTube. So I do like a lot of searching, 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 and I go into different spaces to see, depending on what you want. So for example, uh, when I wanted to do coordination drills, then I'm searching for specific things in that space when i'm looking at like planes i'm looking for things in that space so i think what you want to learn and where you want to go you should try to see uh, if you can find something like that and type that yes go on internet and also like you and i for example we're given nine years into our art it's a responsibility that we go out there to reach you know while they go come to see, so when they're seeking something they should find something not from other artists indian flow artists you know so that's that's again a very good space second space that you should do to kind of like learn things is to look for other courses or other for example uh, you've been trying to do leg hooping and you want to turn back and do it in your like an upside down position or something but you don't have the flexibility right so now you come across some workshop which is doing flexibility workshops right which might not be related to hooping but you should go and do it so that you understand the basic about flexibility and you know what how to engage your core how to engage which body part when when you are trying those different uh, you know uh, postures or whatever so uh, don't limit your mind into thinking ki hooping hai to main upar se hi seekhunga sab kuch tum sab sab upar se nahi seekh sakte you know mm -hmm. like that doesn't work like that yeah, i mean and yeah so i think you have to take it from everybody like you know like uh, the other day when i was learning breaking and that just step of just doing that i was like if i just do it with my hoop like that it'll be so cool like it looks so cool right and uh, i just did that and it looked nice and who knows it will become a part of the act somewhere in the future so the thing is we have to put ourselves out there and get this feedback and then see what gets created like whenever i travel i'm looking for things this weekend also i'm doing a pole workshop finally you know pole has got nothing to do with my art and all that but it has got to do with upside down coring engaging you know it's so much strength that's required so much of movement you need to do right so now i'm able to also do it because i've worked on my mobility my work on my strength so many things so i i can so if we don't put ourselves out there then it will not work so for example if you're stuck with like how to express when your expression is a problem then go for a theater workshop you know or just watch youtube videos where you, where you you have uh, people talking about expressions like i go and watch sometimes sometimes i even bought, uh, look for videos on how to hold cutlery how to do this how to eat this properly how to do that because hum logo ne kuch sikha nahi hai na we don't come knowing everything you know so we have to be uh, but we live as if we know everything so but i think we should take a lot of pride in not knowing things and uh, being open to learning you know and looking for how to do things you know in a certain way like when i was in berlin uh, when i was in germany uh i saw that rachel was uh, dances with circus who's another brilliant artist in the space uh she uh, was giving a workshop in berlin i just saw there and i'm like i'm in germany i can go to berlin i can do this workshop so my hoop even took me to her workshop you know so it made me uh, travel because of it so when you have like you like something it will take you through so many places i met so many different hoopers there understood wh which hoopers do they like which hoopers they do don't like and why don't they like what's going on in that space and i also learned how much how big is the artist space there for example what can be done so i'm just sitting with this information because uh, this is what i can share with the people here
you know so when you go out you come back you share that's what you do i mean that's what very natural for me so i just want to create that more space and i think learning can happen if if anybody wants to learn right uh, and we have to be open to learning different things because you only know your limitation you know so you can't learn things like as a part of the group you can learn through knowing your own limitations what are you good at what are you not good at right what do you need to work on right like for example some people just stand and do this but their legs are constantly moving jinko kehte hain ki pairon mein thehraav nahi so they are not like able to stay in one place but i am also like that generally as a person i am like that but when i'm hooping i have to constantly remind myself to ground i deep breathe ground 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 because i'm a jumpy person you know so for me to stay in one place is very difficult but then uh, whenever i have to do this now i learned breathing exercises for it i learned how to ground myself because when i used to do theater my uh, my mentor used to tell me that tumhare mein thehraav nahi hai you don't know how to stay on the ground you're delivering everything from up energy there's nothing down, downing you so you know this this exposure to theater the exposure to different things has help me understand how to express better how to move better how to manage yourself better so it's it's uh, it's a very uh, as long as we are open to learning we can really change everything i think yeah that's beautiful Within- so what i understand is first you write down goals like you set goals like this is what i would like to do and without any set deadlines per se but this is the thing that i need to do and i will do it today yeah. i must do it today or i must do it tomorrow but i must do it yeah. and uh, setting goals is great then you know exactly which direction you are going and mm. what you want to do and why and uh, then you said that what will it take from me so what do i need to do in order to achieve this goal do i need to take up a class do i need to learn breath work do i need yeah. to you know try different activities which may not exactly be related and then give it the time action yeah. yeah yeah i mean you just doing the workshop is great some people was after doing the workshop they end up going like but i just did one workshop but the one workshop was great you did it something in you wanted you to do it you know so we have to be kind to ourselves also because i did that flexibility workshop years ago and then i'm like yeah whatever but i still practice it still remembers in my head when i'm giving teaching something to the child it just suddenly comes up so you don't know like where the knowledge will come from exposure is what we can provide to ourselves that's it everything else comes as a flow you know right and uh, also uh, i hear often from my students and uh, friends who i like to teach poi that yeah. they talk to me and say like hey you know after starting poi training i can now skate better and i can draw better and yes. i can sing better and you know something super unrelated but yes. it knocks in 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 a character in a person and i feel that really interesting and i feel that flow arts has this magic of of bringing art and physical wellness together and uh, what are your thoughts about it yeah yeah absolutely because i think and this only people who can who will pick it up will realize you know so because for me also personally when it started doing it one day i'm realizing oh my god how much am i sweating you know and uh, that made me realize that oh wow it can be a great workout you know and i had gym phobia at that time so i would not go to any gyms and i don't like the sound of machine so for me i i realized that okay i'm perspiring and it's good for my body perspiring is what you need to do uh you know you need to sweat every day and as long as i'm sweating every day maybe things will be better so instead of just following any doctor mechanics or whatever you know like i'm not looking into those biomechanics of things how things work and you know figuring out like my life that way but i was just like yeah i'm sweating and i think that's good that's good for now so i'll just keep doing it and i'll make sure that i do so much that i sweat that much you know what i mean because i have low sweat glands so i don't sweat too much so i was just like okay agar main itna sweat kar rahi hu to matlab kafi achhi calories burn ho gayi you know matlab this is my logic at that point of time wellness is something that uh and it's not just like it's it's hooping doesn't just come into your life and be like hey this is the uh one straight answer to your problem you know what i mean so six pack abs <laughs> yes exactly like like oh core you know like that what happens is is a beautiful thing i'll explain okay so when you start hooping around your waist first of all right now you're pushing all your energy into this one part of your body to move it right that's when you realize oh concentration 
present in the moment. Yes. Yes. Oh, I'm in the moment. You know, and when you finish the class, probably you realize that oh, the whole time I did not hear, think about the issues which were troubling me. And and man, I felt so good in my body. Oh, I sweated. You know, and that was nice. You know, so you start having these small reactions from your body to begin with. The and the biggest reaction and the response that I've seen always, and this is always hundred percent, is joy. You know, and when you have joy hormones coming out and ooze, exactly oozing from your smile, oozing from your hands, from your body language and everything, you know, I like to see how people walk in and then they leave. You know, that's my favorite part of the day, right? So we, I see that wellness is doing well now, you know, and it will go into a space very soon, you know, because this is when you become conscious. So as long as you're enjoying anything, be it weightlifting, be it hooping, be it, uh, you know, calisthenics, whatever, then the joy hormones, the happy hormones, you know, that has a different effect on you. You know, even when you're eating food, most of the time when you're eating food, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, then how will it help you, right? So uh, the point is like, you do something with a lot of joy. Even if you're eating extra and you're not supposed to eat, it's like, great, my body needs it, I'm eating, you know? So I never give bad energy thing. If, I've con- if I'm consuming anything, then it is that it's my choice. And now we are doing something through which we are able to give attention to our body, right? So everything starts from there. Those, and I always say this, those who cannot meditate, please hoop or pick up any flow art for that matter. You know, because it helps you stay in that moment. It helps you be there. I am somebody definitely uh, who, who has a lot of overriding thoughts. So many thoughts, so many creative ideas keep popping up, right? I open like 14 slabs and go through it. So if you're also somebody like that, then you have to understand that you have to do something with your hands, especially people with anxiety. I spoke about it very earlier in my moving journey bit because it helped me that day. So I have to share it, which is that it helped me become uh, for mental health it became very very important for me to start doing this because i was not able to meditate and i would beat myself that everybody is able to meditate i can't even meditate for like one minute what the why the hell you know and then when i'm hooping i realize it's ours and at that moment i'm not thinking about anything else i'm just in the moment trying to drill that trick or just flowing with the movement or the music or the dance or release whatever you know it just goes easily so attention comes to you, your consciousness comes to you, your breathing uh, uh, understanding comes to you. So the wellness is a side effect of what you're doing, is what I say, you know. So it, it's a beautiful side effect that one can have. It's like a workout in disguise, okay. So you are actually just having fun. You are having a great time. You're focused on learning tricks, but this is something that it gives you on the side. So if you're hooping every day, 10 minutes now, and you will know it because you, you are also a hooper, but uh, if you just do it for six months or five months continuously or three months also, you would start feeling the inches lost around from your stomach immediately. You know, that's what happened for me. I personally lost 10 kgs. I was not very heavy or something, but I did not like how I was, you know, and that's what matters to me. So I was heavier than what I imagined myself to be and what I want to be, you know. So that time I realized that I have to do something about it, you know. So then when you put the attention to the, uh, this, the wellness just becomes a part of it. And then you start realizing that, you know, now that you're doing hooping, see what will happen is now, once you're doing hooping, then you are uh, 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 troubling your whole body so much. Then you need to learn conditioning, right? To manage it through, then you need to learn stretching, you know, because your muscles will get tensed up and all of that. So everything just falls slowly, slowly, slowly into your life, one after the other, exactly. And you need to understand that it's not giving you one straight point answer. It's not a bow and arrow, you know. It, it is something that will surprise you at different points of your journey. And that's why we don't call it like a goal. It's a hoop journey for us, right? I call it hoop journey because it's it, in this journey, will you will realize many things about yourself. You will discover parts of you you didn't know existed. You will discover uh, the sides of you which you didn't know existed, you know. And it will bring up and open up a complete different uh, portal for you, I would say. The moment when you're learning this new trick and you're like super anxious and your your cortisols are super high because your mm. brain is trying to yes. gauge the time, distance, yeah weight and all these properties involved in this particular trick like how do you feel in that moment then like is there something that you can talk about this uh, state of mind when you're like I can't do it I can't do it oh I did it oh my yeah. god yeah that happens all the time like I think 
sometimes like the other day i was just so sick and i was lying on the bed and i'm like man i've not moved in 3 days man i'm useless and i can feel my mental health is going off because when i forget to brush i know i've lost it then i come back and then uh, i was just lying down and i lifted one leg and i put one move then i put another move and i'm like why should i not do it too then i start doing it too and then i suddenly see myself splitting it you know and then i'm like oh great now i split it what 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 if i put it on both the legs now you know so i'm just like going crazy and that those moments are the moments i live for you know personally you know because i want to be making breakthroughs with my art you know so i think that's very important you know for me personally as an educator also because i get something new and i can teach it to the kids you know so there's excitement there's something like um, like i love it i love this space of breaking through i think those are the when you ask me what are the best thing moments of your life those are also was one of the best moments of my life like when i'm able to break through like there are sometimes that i'm doing some tricks with poi for example there's a trick which i've seen uh, tushal do it where he throws and catches like this and it goes like in this i don't know what it's called okay so like this and then i just saw him doing it and i'm like i can do it with my hoops maybe and then i started doing that and now that has become such an important part of what i do you know so is this it's amazing that you know like you sometimes we uh, and you know what this is why seeing so many hoopers is important also not to compare just to see what they do because sometimes i've seen myself that i'm flowing 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 and i would get like a flash of something that this person might have tried or something like that and i would just end up doing it you know and it's such a mini second of like it takes such a small small like it happens so fast you know sometimes in my head then i'm like oh okay and then i'm like yeah okay i've seen this there all oh, great i was doing it and then i make a own version of it. like how can it be mine now you know so that is it just comes out of it and i think many many things i've learned like that you know uh, i think that this is also one of the reasons why courses and online classes by people who are offering lessons is important for people yeah. to take they take it up because you can mm-hmm. you know create a momentum with the breakthroughs that you can have and yeah your your skills are being leveled up and you know you can actually feel mm-hmm. the the rewards coming in from from these lessons mm-hmm. and you know not only are you supporting another flow artist but you are also learning from their experience of many years yeah absolutely absolutely i think very much important right now Good. and also mm-hmm. learning from your community you know we rub off each other so that's nice to have people who like you said that you learn you watched tushal playing poi and you wanted to incorporate that in hula hoop so you see that how it can be mm-hmm. like it doesn't even have to be something yeah. good to the topic but it can still be a source of inspiration for you as long as you are that brain that keeps looking out for some new stuff to happen when you self taught you have to find these methods to your learning you know but now the scenes are so good there are so many flow artists everywhere you know you just have to appear in a jam or you know you just like spend time with the people around you know you would just end up learning by just being in that environment you know if you're willing to learn if you're sitting there for other things then it's your problem but if you're sitting there to learn then uh, your conversation will go in that direction your points will go in that direction and the beauty of uh, us as human beings is that everybody wants to be useful everybody wants to share you know so they will only share if you ask if you're just sitting there and you'll want to learn a trick like a windmill and there's someone who knows it and you're just sitting there and talking about the weather so it's a waste of your time you can ask them and see if they can teach you for example right so i think providing that environment to ourselves and being a seeker you know being a, a, a student again you know uh, helps us immensely and uh, so many things you just learn by observing you know it's crucial also because uh, when when you are going out in a flow art event and uh, when you are going to conventions and when you are going to these parties and it the, the atmosphere can be really uh intimidating because you see all these talented people everywhere and you are the first mm-hmm. time you are coming to such a place and you have no idea yeah. who to talk to what to ask and you don't even know the name of the tricks you love so much but you really sure. want to know something about it and now that you are this introvert person and now you're having an anxiety attack and you just yes. is in the corner and like what am i supposed to do here everybody's already on the next league and 
I, I don't think I'm going to be able to do. What would you say to those people who, who really need a little bit push and, and you know, like yeah. how you say that you need to be a student and, and you need to look yeah. out for a uh, conversation or like show up and ask for things. So like I, yeah. I know for a fact because uh, a lot of flow artists are maybe really emotional people as I, as I yeah. see. Know, they have a soul of an artist and and a very emotional side to them and um, how how can we as uh, people who are giving out information and how can those people who are really reserved or conditioned not to really go out there and take what's for them how do we connect this bridge that's a very amazing question, by the way. <laughs> so, uh, because I think it's so relatable, you know, I've been in that space where I've gone to spaces and I'm seeing like, whoa, 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 you know, <laughs> exactly. And honestly, I don't know if I'm fully in that space to give an advice of that, but I'll speak from my experience because there are still certain things that I am personally working on also. I mean, uh, to be a, a, on the stage again and all of those things, I'm still not doing it, you know, like how you say. So I, I would just say that uh, when it comes to, uh, being in the space where you really are intimidated, you love someone and you admire them and all of that, um, you know, you remember that it's not about you. It's about the art. So if you respect the art, take the attention there. If you respect the art, if you respect what you do, if you respect what they do, and this is your opportunity, then you will go back with two things. Either you, you will go back with regret or you will go back with feeling happy that, hey, I took a step and I did it and I asked, right? So you should do that. So this is, this is, I would say that you have to take an effort. But having said that, I do understand because I've been in those situations that there are signs, times when I want to do it, but I am so much in my head that I'm not able to, you know, although all, all ounce of me and everything is saying, you've brought yourself till here. And most, most of the times we are self-judging ourselves. And uh, also when we have ego, when, when we think of ourselves as something too much you know then also the sense of thing can come in you know so it also plays reverse like that and uh, so ego has a huge role to play i feel like my ego was very high in the beginning i was very i was my ambition was coming across as crossing territories boundaries or something like that maybe to some people i don't know but i feel like must have touched upon those cards but uh, the point is like now I changed it completely from like five, six years. I think I'm not the same person anymore, right? I don't look at life anymore like that. So uh, when you're in the space, like when I was in the space, I also was like, you know what, do you really want to do it? Like, are you ready for it? You know, like that. So if I don't, if I don't feel ready, there have been times that I've not done, you know, I sat with that thought in my head, made myself go through that regret, made myself come back and then question it. Why were you, why did you do it? And that became like a lesson for me to not do it again, you know. So I would say that some people have to go through this also to understand that they, uh, see, it's not giving you anything. So while my words might tell people, ki, okay, let's do it, you know. But uh, if you're not feeling it from inside, from your own, then you wouldn't know. Because your insecurities have your own reason. My uh, reasons for insecurities have been my bullying in childhood, for example, right? So my insecurities come from that space that there was nobody fighting for me, nobody doing for me, nobody should take me for a ride. So now you wait and I'll take you for a ride. You know, sometimes those things come into the head, right? So then you realize that Atasha, there's a difference between me and them, you know? <laughs> you know, so everybody has negative thoughts. Everybody has a lot of thoughts. We have very daily thoughts. We have very devil thoughts, you know? So we just need to match them and find a space for them somewhere in the spectrum of balance, you know? And uh, just, just know that, you know, there could be some days that, you know, all the things are going right and this could be your only opportunity to learn from that person. But uh, you must be so you know, irritated in your head that you don't want to uh, do it. And that's okay. You know, that's okay. You know, because uh, you, you know, you'll have to deal with it tomorrow. So you, you, you can deal with it in any way because now I am able to say, do it because it's your opportunity because I've done this and now I know this. And that's why I will not say other people to do it, but you will come across in your life that you will end up knowing everything and still doing it. And that's when you tell yourself that it's okay. Next time when I go to something like this, I'm not going to do that. That's it. Just that kindness to yourself, I think, is is a is a game changer. Yes. So we have a question from one of our Instagram flow artist friend, and uh, he would like to ask you 
what is the character that you assume and like what is your style when it comes to presentation performing like is there a alter ego so my artist name is going to be devi devil and uh, this is going to be um uh, let's see how it goes so through that i'm going to create Next many time characters. i heard that yes yeah it's very yeah. catchy and like wow good combination yeah thanks so this also just like i wasn't wasn't planning like all the learnings that i'm receiving now thanks to the universe for giving me all the lessons as i take the leap of faith into becoming an artist and all that so it started just coming on its own and i realized that i want to be there right there in the spectrum where you know when you when you say devil you cannot not say devi you know you're saying it and you're saying it so there is devi in every devil and there is devil in every devi so that's my understanding so i guess navesh would be happy to know this and i had not uh, in fact i'm telling this on your podcast so i'm not even like announced it or put it but i've locked my instagram account and let's see i'm excited to create things but i'm very very uh, uh, scared also of how it will be perceived because you put yourself out for judgement and other things right so uh, like i said it's a journey that i need to first clean and i'm definitely coming out once i process all of this uh, kachra that's going on in my head so yeah but yeah i'm excited thanks for asking i think that's a very healing process also what do you think about it like absolutely absolutely i think you touched upon something very cool by the way by just observing this because i think uh, uh, you know every artist is creating these characters and these characters are coming out from what from the experiences they might have seen the issues that they might have dealt in their life or um, the the uh, some inspiration that may might have come from watching someone or whatever so they are never yours you know so what you're doing is actually what is not yours you're bringing it to life you know so it, it's it's a very powerful way of like the only people who can give birth are mothers and artists because they, we are just giving birth to things that don't exist you know i wasn't here from this world but we created them so i i think it's very powerful that so this devi and devil also came through all of this understanding that i spoke to you about right that uh, we are always uh, we have to be in the center from there i can go to my darkest sides you know where i'm so dark so dark and then i can go to the lightest side you know which is so kind so generous so loving you know so uh, i have these spectrums and in within this range i can create any avatar any character that can come out of these emotional spectrum space right so uh and and what i am trying to tap personally and and it's still running so i'm still allowing it to come on its own and get on its own so every day like something on the other and like the font should be like this you know so the font gets ready you know so it's like dheere dheere skeleton hai aur abhi mai body parts jod rahi you know so every artist is doing that right and every character is born out of something very deep i think you know something that you can explain like a viewer cannot also explain it's so personal to an artist to say that this is the vibe this is the energy and this energy wants to come out through this medium you know so that's how i look at it you know there were many characters that came out like that like in my previous house i had like one poster of a girl who was smoking a cigarette like this and i had like a bougainvillea plant made out of her you know and what was that i called her stella what was stella you know so stella for me was just this girl who was carefree you know who was sitting under a bougainvillea tree and smoking away to glory you know so she represented like a very carefree side to her you know in my eye for example and that character helped me uh feel good for the time being so i think these characters are beautiful because they make you feel you know certain things which you not feel otherwise because there are so many masks we as human beings wear you know cholas as we say to carry on as a function of a girl a sister a daughter a mother a blah 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 blah, blah. so we break all that right so this is our breakthrough that you know like i'm not a mother i'm not a sister i am stella <laughs> or i'm baby devil <laughs> you know so i think it gives you a sort sort, sort of a escape sort, sort of a dissociation helps you uh think actively because you know when when you're associated with our own pain we can't think logically true but when when you when we when, when, but same advice if you have to give it to your friend you're looking at your friend and then you'll be like yeah don't do this i can like you can see it for them but you can't see it for yourself you know so that's why the characters become so powerful because you are seeing them with all their glory all their devi in them all their devil in them and still 
making it alive you know judging them it is what it is you know so that i think is very beautiful that i think is only uh, somebody who understand art art is in, in that space will get it so beautifully like it's so amazing their expression through art and your your identity yeah right now honestly i'm not able to create anything also because i'm so judgmental of my anything that i create right now and it has come because there has been expectations and i know there have been eyes on me so it's not easy to navigate through all that also you know so i make this and i'm like i will not be accepted sometimes you start thinking for the people who are going to watch which is also so wrong so this is why i'm not able to create anything because i'm also personally slowly slowly navigating from this till i find the power to say nothing affects me you know so i am getting there but i'm slowly working there at my own pace it's nothing to do with anybody else but i'll get there i know one day i'll get there and not in a rush agar main kal mar gayi tab to koi fayda hi nahi hai sab cheezon ka agar main nahi mari so this is my goal <laughs> at least i have something to follow so i i like to keep my head like that <laughs> straight like that the flow arts is a space that i i know what i'm working on right now i know where my 7 hours or 8 hours of the day will go when it comes to working so on the side what i want to do is be a traveling artist for a while like that's my dream like a recent dream to be able to travel sustain and uh, learn ex- share you know build create so much i want to do right in that space and support also because i know i have understood that you know uh it has taken me a long time to also accept myself and that i could be a gift for people you know and i i bring a lot to the table and all that now i've come to that point where i know that if i go somewhere i'm always bringing something you know so now i'm in the space where i want to be traveling i want to be exploring and i want to get comfortable uh with able to perform in front of people you know again and all of that because those things it people think that it's just comes very naturally to me but because i'm such a preparation person strategic person business woman also so many other layers that i have to kind of shut off to be an artist sometimes it's not easy for me it's not easy for me at the moment but i'm on that path so five years down the line or maybe one year or maybe one month you know you never know right it will happen yeah yeah i'm sure so, that the the entrepreneur side of you is also supporting your flow arts in some way you, you know yeah. you have these conflicting and contradicting aspects but when we really try to find the balance we do that we find yeah it, you know? yeah and you can be doing the best you can and thanks to this entrepreneurial brain you yeah. can now make it uh, into a success <laughs> and more people and make a progress and you know and i'm glad that you you realize that you know there are these two sides of you yeah woman and then there is this one person who is a pure art you have like a agreement with like both sides like okay right i'm going to use when i'm going to need you and you i'm going to keep you you know <laughs> yeah yeah no you're absolutely right yeah no but you know but that also doesn't come naturally you know because uh, for me like i would judge my uh, entrepreneur mind because for example if i'm getting like uh, uh, any artist to send at an event or like if i'm uh, trying to get a deal negotiated with someone and all that uh, if they are paying a certain amount i know it's so less right so i would want to go and pitch for higher and give them reasons and all of those things will happen and uh, i'm trying to approach it from the way i approach businesses and agency right so sometimes it doesn't work in this space and obviously most of the times it doesn't work in this space because artists have not again going back to the problem of not being speaking for themselves so when they haven't spoken like that or they when in the past they have ch- uh, charged less and now they are charging more so then it becomes like a problem to uh, kind of deal with but my entrepreneur mind would also always want to push the best and give like so many reasons and i would try to negotiate on those terms and only to realize and fail that these spaces cannot work the same way you know or sometimes i'm looking at some, creating something and i'm looking at only monetary aspect of it you know so i've forgotten about the art aspect of it now i'm just trying to think about we have to do this let's just push this you know and then i'm and i feel very icky about it you know in my head that i'm being i'm running after money i'm doing this i'm doing that so there are lots of things that i have i personally keep navigating in my head you know so you have to keep setting resetting yourself when the thought comes so when it happens i i give it time you know i i don't jump jump into thing and i also see that you know okay okay don't bring your entrepreneur side to it and sometimes my friends also tell me that you know no no don't look at it from money perspective 
you know this one we are doing for this this one we are doing for that so there are people community people to help you navigate what what is going on in my mind sometimes i'm like stuck am i thinking right let me just call sir out let me just check with somebody else like what do they think about it you know so now i'm learning how to also not take those decision independently on my own because that is what i was doing in my business you know so that used to eat me now i'm trying to be more open take the advice of community people what do they think they're not losers right like they're doing so many things in the space for so long and they have also left their full time job to follow their passion so there's so much to learn from each other that way right and so i try to be open to that and that's my it but yeah that's happening so yeah i how i see it that if we do not have this entrepreneurial brain we would soon run out of money and not have yes comfort. exactly absolutely absolutely and joining some uh, miserable jobs and crying every day did that <laughs> done that did that you know, having this uh, support financially from flow arts is also very crucial to keep us moving in this direction and this is why so we do think about the monetary aspect mm-hmm. uh, it, it's not been done before that somebody had to pay commission for their gig which was given to them but it needs to start happening so we mm-hmm. show a little appreciation for each other for those who have been part of the process and it's it's not nothing we do actively make an impact on each other when it comes to friend to friend even right so uh, not only is the artistic aspect important but when it comes to the business aspect it's nice to have support from your uh, crew from uh, people yeah so important it's very crucial very very crucial you know these days like i said you can't survive alone you need a community you know you need support you need the net you need the space and you need to uh, treat people with respect understand that they are also you know doing their thing so be open to learning and exchange like this time you know when i came to goa we met we did a flow jam and at the beach you came vajra came um you know, leona came from here saira aisha we were also there so when we all met there were things were discussed you know it might feel like nothing else in evening but so many ideas were exchanged right thought processes were exchanged uh, for probably this matter, podcast for the yeah exactly for a matter of fact i was just going to mention that you mentioned about your youtube channel and how you can monetize your channel and you see that that is also something that's going to back you up in your in your journey with the hula hooping absolutely so, i hope so <laughs> yeah um, so, i mean that's your at least you are making an attempt to like go into that direction and like you know yeah. chart out the uncharted territories of youtube let's say yeah. so also spark that that feeling for me you know that day when we went to the beach and we were talking about this yeah. and i was like hey, exactly so we need to do something about youtube like it's a great channel to learn and like to share your mm-hmm. ideas with people and uh, here we are like you are the first uh, guest on this podcast like thank you mm-hmm. god for like creating that impact you see and i'm sure that but, through mm-hmm. this effort that we're making today we gonna impact more people and maybe like all these things that we kind of yes. answer for each other uh, a lot of people may have in their own minds and you know maybe the yeah doing some of yes in a, in a fair way let's say but yeah i i am really looking forward to the reaction of uh, the community and the people what they feel mm-hmm. after this interview and uh, yes what what yeah what the most favorite part for them and it will be nice to mm-hmm. yeah it will be exciting to do yeah, and i'm actually very excited for it luna because you know and it's not just about thinking about these ideas so we are giving a direct example right like we met there we spoke about it an idea and seed was developed and here we are we are recording this conversation but there is someone in this who's also taking efforts right so that also needs to be acknowledged you're taking the effort to do it and that's what i want community people to do you know taking the effort to do it whatever you're doing and then everybody is there to support you know and figure out what to do uh, next yeah i'm also very grateful to you for like taking the effort you know to also do it 
and uh, i can see that there i i can't wait to see what other people who other people you are going to bring and you know because there's always so much to learn from another flow artist and when you sit in jams and talk to people on a deeper level then you feel that oh my god everybody is going through some similar things and you know there's so much of relevance resonance and all that 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 is going on and right now a community needs to talk needs to come out needs to express what they feel you know because everybody is working in silo and doing their own thing we only know people from their instagram handle we don't know what they think how they think how they live think behave which is what you are doing with your initiative right now right getting a little bit deeper into those thoughts so thank you for that thank you for taking this initiative kind of i think you should ask the audience isn't it we should ask the audience right here that if you want to be a part of a, a discussion right and discussion would happen every month maybe you'll see once in a month to begin with is what we were discussing right and because these little seeds and thoughts we need to exchange you know we need like a space to exchange so just like this right now it's you and me but tomorrow it could be you guys four or five people 10 people i don't care about the numbers i care about the exchanges i care about the talk that we could do so if you guys are open for it and have some ideas of how we can go about it or have some topics which you think which we as flow community should talk about please write it in the comment section right because we would love to hear from the community and you would understand why we are asking if you have listened to the whole of the conversation so far to understand our intent and understand the purpose and why we want to do it i love the name by the way i love it <laughs> so i hope we get more uh, points of perspective from other uh, flow artists and i can't wait to hear it thank you luna thank you so much you're the best for the best we did it we did it we did it we did it sit in one place we did it If you're a flow artist and uh, you think that today's interview was something of great value to you, please subscribe to the channel and uh, like the video, share it with your friend. Thanks a lot for watching the entire episode. It was a first yeah. one, but it was a really long one. And thank you for sitting through it. And it's been thank you, thank you everyone, whoever is watching. Okay, we'll do our happy dance.